Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26. Starting there, anyway. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun, another name for Israel, by the way, who rides the heavens to help you, and in his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you, and will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone, in a land of grain and new wine, his heavens shall also drop dew. I want to focus on the verse, or the part of verse 27 that says, the everlasting arms. Often, I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, um, I grew up in a ba I didn't grow up in a Baptist church, I was saved in a Baptist church, a more traditional Southern Baptist church, so there's a hymn about the everlasting arms and leaning on them. And often when this verse, or actually not the verse itself, but when it is preached, it's taught, it's always talking about safety, security, and indeed that is true. There is absolute safety and, 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 bleh, bleh, and security. I'm not going to edit this either. Ah. Because the reason there's safety and security in the everlasting arms is because he is going to destroy your enemies. And that is not often thought about much in modern Christianity, and certainly I've never heard it talked about in that verse before. But the everlasting arms are a source of strength. They're a source um, to fight from. They're a source to wreck from. If someone's coming against you and you're a believer in Christ, the everlasting arms are going to defend you, and they're going to fight against your enemy. I really and honestly never thought of that. I've read that verse, I think I've, I've, this is my third time through the Bible, Read the verse twice, never really thought about it. But I'm like in the context, I mean, I'll just read it again. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. There is a, prior to it, it is talking about him being your refuge, so that's safety and security. And the everlasting arms certainly are that. I already covered how he will never leave or forsake you. So there's a certain amount of security and always him being there with you. That's certainly there, and him being a refuge is part of it, but the other part of that is he will attack on your behalf. God will actively defend you. And there's a ton of things where it's like, well, God hasn't defended me. God hasn't been on my side. He's on your side. He's fighting on your behalf. He fought sin itself on your behalf when he died on the cross for you 2,000 years ago. So he is fighting. He did fight, and he is fighting. And ultimately, the ultimate victory will be won. Please be confident in God's word and be confident in the one who is not only sheltering you and um, giving you a refuge, but in the one who is fighting for you and who will say destroy to your enemies. And no, that doesn't refer to other people. You're supposed to love your enemies. Keep that in mind. God told you to love your enemies. So, that's about it. Hopefully that was helpful and not confusing. Maybe a little confusing. Maybe I can cover that tomorrow on the message. Or maybe the Lord will lay something else in my heart. Who knows? I love you guys. God bless.